The S&P is officially in a bull market up by 20% from its October lows because 19.9% just wasn't good enough. But now it's the time to buy. And we actually are starting to see some improvements for a bull market with the Russell 2000 finally catching a bid this week and the big tech names finally getting sold off. So money is rotating from the big tech names that have been rallying nonstop year to date and into the laggers in the Russell 2000 and the Dow Jones. And looking over at the weekly charts, SPY ended up starting this week at $428.28 and almost managing to close at 430 but just missing the mark at 429.90. QQQ had a very flat week after selling off a ton on Wednesday, but then ended up recovering at the end of the week, starting the week at 354.43 and ending the week just a few cents higher at 354.50. The Dow Jones ended up rallying this week from $338.21 to a close at 339.27. And the Russell 2000, the big winner for this week, ended up going up from $181.26 all the way to a close at $185.03. So Russell 2000, the small caps, got a majority of the love this week. QQQ ended up getting left behind. And we are officially in a bull market with SPY up by 20% from its lows. And there really wasn't a lot of data or news that ended up sending us up this week. It was a majority just based on options that were expiring on Wednesday and then on Friday, in terms of data, it was a very boring week. If we look over at the economic calendar, on Monday, we had the S&P Global Composite PMI coming in barely worse than expected at 54.3 versus 54.5, up from 53.4 as of April. The services PMI came in slightly higher than last month, but worse than expected at 54.9 versus 55.1 expected, up from 53.6. So we're probably going to continue to see services and inflation throughout the economy. Factory orders also came in worse than expected at 0.4% versus 0.8% expected. This is down from 0.6% as of last month. And if factory orders are going down, that means that less goods are being produced. So either this means that we're going into a recession based on the factories producing less goods, expecting less people to be buying goods, or we're going to have continued inflation if we still have the same amount of demand that we had before and production is slowing down. And then finally, the last big report on Monday was the ISM non-manufacturing PMI, which ended up coming in worse than expected at 50.3 versus 52.2 and this is down from 51.9 for the month of april so that's all the data that came out on monday didn't really have anything on tuesday nothing on wednesday that was notable and then on thursday we had the continuing jobless claims and the initial jobless claims with the initial jobless claims coming in worse than expected at 261,000 people filing for unemployment this week versus 235,000 expected and this is up from 233,000 as of last week. So almost 30,000 more people applied for unemployment this week compared to last week. But the continuing jobless claims actually ended up coming down at 1.757 million people total unemployed versus 1.8 million expected. So this was better than expectations. And this is down from 1.794 million as of last week. So it's interesting that we're starting to see the continuing jobless claims or the total number of unemployed people coming down after we saw the unemployment rate going from 3.4% to 3.7%. So maybe this continuing jobless claims has some sort of lag effect on the unemployment rate to where we might be seeing close to 3.8 to 4% unemployment in the next couple of months. Also notable on Thursday, we had the Fed balance sheet coming in at $8.389 billion versus $8.386 billion as of last week, so slightly up, but this is basically at the levels that we saw before the Silicon Valley Bank collapsed and the Fed ended up injecting a ton of liquidity. So now all of this liquidity has been pulled back likely to be pulled back even further considering that the treasury is about to issue a ton of bonds for the debt ceiling so this is going to be an interesting moment because all the bulls were very hyped up considering all of this liquidity that was injected and now that's being evaporated away and that was all the news that we got this week in terms of the data and really the only thing that was moving us in a really big way this week was 
the options chain. There was a lot of options open for this Wednesday's expiration for QQQ with a lot of open interest at $352. So once we ended up coming below 352, it was just a sell off all day. And then on Friday, we had some more upside above 355. There's a bunch of open interest in calls above that strike price. So we ended up rallying first thing in the morning. We ended up hitting the new high barely at $357.66. Previously, we went up to $357.12 and before that $357.50. So this would be a triple top. The stock market ended up pulling back from this triple top, but there really wasn't any competition from the bears with very little open interest above $354. So we didn't really go down much below 354 and ended up closing the week for QQQ at 354.50. And this week's definitely going to be an interesting one with the monthly options expiration or OPEX for June 16th with the hottest tables by far being the 355 strike price with 49,500 open interest for the 355 calls, 22,500 open interest for the 355 puts. So almost twice as many call options at this strike price then puts and then if you're looking at the 360 strike price there's no competition here with 43,700 open interest in call options versus only 4,592 open interest for the 360 puts so if we get above 360 this week it's going to be no competition from the bears but if we do end up managing to go down this week there's going to be some competition from the bears at the 350 strike price with 66,200 open interest for the 350 puts but there is 83,500 open interest for the call. So still more calls and put options this week, which might end up putting some upward pressure towards QQQ, but we'll really have to see whether we go to 350 by the end of the week or 360. And then from there, that's when things will start to really move in a big way. And then if you're looking for SPY for the June 16th expiration, there's a lot of call options with a 430 strike price, 63,500 open interest there versus only 28,900 open interest for the puts. For the 425s, you're looking at 44,600 puts versus 53,400 calls. The 420 strike price has 73,500 call options versus 84,900 puts. And the 435 strike price has 43,000 open interest for calls versus only 2,900 for puts. So if we get to 435 by the end of this week, no competition from the bears but if we get down to 425 there is going to be some competition and possibly some more downside to 420 with 84,800 open interest versus only 73,500 open interest for calls and all of this week is going to depend on one person we all know who it is jerome powell speaking on wednesday we're going to have the fomc meeting at 2 30 on wednesday and the rate decision at 2 p.m where we're expected to end up pausing for this month with only a 29.9 percent chance of raising by 25 basis points and a 70.1 percent chance of pausing for this month but right now they're calling it a skip to where they're going to pause at this meeting raise at the next meeting We'll see if that actually happens. My guess, if they pause this meeting, they're probably done. But we're going to have the FOMC meeting on Wednesday at 2 o'clock for the rate decision, 2.30 for Powell to speak. And then the other notable events this week, we're going to have the consumer inflation expectations at 11 o'clock on Monday, where previously this ended up coming in at 4.4%. We're going to have CPI, the last big data piece before the Fed meeting, where the core CPI for April ended up coming in at 5.5%. We don't have any predictions for this month. The month over month reading is expected to come out at 0.4% versus 0.4% last month. And then the regular CPI is expected to come in at 0.3% month over month versus 0.4% as of last month. And then the regular CPI, no expectations, but last month this ended up coming in at 4.9%. And then on Wednesday, we're going to have a little bit more inflation data with the core PPI expected to come in at 2.9% year over year versus 3.2% as of last month. The month over month reading came in at 0.2% for the month of April, no expectations for May. The regular PPI year over year is expected to come in at 1.1% versus 2.3% as of last month. And the month over month reading is expected to come in at 0.2% versus 0.2% last month. And then the big event on Wednesday, we're going to have the FOMC meeting with a rate decision at 2 p.m. and then Fed Powell speaking at 2.30. 
I'll be going live. Hopefully you're there. On Thursday, we're going to have retail sales with core retail sales coming in at 0.4% in April. No expectations for this month. And then the jobless claims were last week. This came in at 261,000. And we're expected to have 1.776 million people unemployed this week compared to 1.757 million as of last week. After that, we're going to have the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index where last month this came in at negative 10.4. We all know that manufacturing indexes across the country have been in a major slump. So if we do see some improvement, this might end up being bullish on Thursday. Then we're going to have retail sales where the expectations is 2.2% year over year versus 1.6%. And then the month over month reading for April ended up coming in at 0.4%. No expectations for May. Retail inventories X auto is expected to come in at negative 0.1% versus negative 0.1% as of last month. So inventories are expected to continue to decline, which means that prices would be going up. Less supply in the same amount of demand means that prices go up. And then on Friday, you're going to have Fed Waller speaking at 745 in the morning. The Michigan report at 10 a.m. where the five-year inflation expectations is expected to come in at 3.1% versus 3.1% for May. The Michigan consumer expectations for May ended up coming in at 55.4. No expectations for this week. Consumer sentiment ended up coming in at 59.2 for May. No expectations for this week. Michigan current conditions is expected to come in at 61.6 versus 64.9 for the month of May. And then the Michigan inflation expectations one-year inflation expectations is expected to go up to 4.4% for this week versus 4.2%. And that's all the big data that's coming out for this week. There's really not much on the earnings calendar besides Oracle on Monday, Aurora Cannabis on Wednesday in the morning, and then Adobe on Thursday after the close, I think probably the best one to trade is going to be Adobe for this week, where their earnings per share is expected to come in at $3.79, and the revenue is expected to come in at $4.78 billion. And going over to the charts for ADBE, this one's been on a massive rally over the last month from $331.89 all the way to $456.30. So up about 50% for the past month. And looking over the yearly chart, this is trading at 52-week highs with a gap up on Friday. So if they end up missing their earnings per share, this could have a very solid pullback, closing that gap down to 439.50. But right now, not a stock to bet against with the RSI extremely hot at 74.7 and the MACD not showing any signs of crossing back over to the downside. So if you're a momentum trader, this would be an upside trade, but I probably wouldn't put a ton of money on it just because it's been just going parabolic over the past month. So you're chasing something instead of being in front of it, but it's definitely going to have a volatile week with the earnings scheduled for 6.15 on Thursday in the after hour session. So definitely going to be an interesting one to watch. And that's pretty much all I got for y'all this week. Hopefully this video was useful. It was. Show some love, leave a like. Thanks for making it to the end and thank you to all my patrons and my channel members for their support. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.